Today is Monday, December 6th, and this is the ADM Investor Services Weekly Market Kickoff. Please note that the views and opinions expressed here today are solely those of our guests and should not be construed as the views or opinions of ADM Investor Services or ADM. Today's guests are Steve Freed, ADMIS Vice President of Grain Research, and Alan Bush, ADM Investor Services Senior Financial Economist. Steve, starting with the grain markets this morning, corn, wheat, and soybean futures ran into resistance last week. Why, and do you think prices will continue higher? We had a lot of uh, managed futures buying because of uh, threat of inflation and also some South American weather. But the buying put it right up against some key resistance, nearby beans at 13, corn at 6, and wheat uh, like in the 858, 60 area in Kansas City. So we just ran out of buying. And as we uh, got to the end of the month, and uh, now we have a USDA report, we're just seeing some profit taking, and I do think prices uh, will trend higher after uh, the USDA report. Steve, what are the key fundamentals that traders should be looking at currently as it applies to the grains? On the bullish side, I think that southern Brazil and northeast Argentina is going to be dry. U.S., Midwest, and southern plains are dry. Uh, China came back into the U.S. corn and soybean market uh, last week, and I think Domestic bases are very strong with very profitable margins in soybean crush and ethanol. You know, on the negative side, uh, we're still uh, not seeing quite the export numbers that uh, we would like. Um, and the futures are very sensitive to our exports. USDA on December 9th could uh, raise the bean carryout because of low exports. And I think the other thing is that uh, they might not change the wheat numbers and corn numbers as much as the bulls would like to see. Uh, down the road, I think that um, we're talking about maybe some weather issues, some lower corn acres, and the domestic demand continues to be strong. So I think we will test those resistance levels and eventually uh, trade through them in the first quarter of 2022. Steve, you briefly mentioned weather. Can you give us an update on the global weather situation? You know, I think that uh, the market, first of all, had heard earlier that we were going to have a cold winter. And so far, that hasn't happened. We've seen a setback in natural gas prices, uh, pr pretty strong. Our weather guy feels that there's cold air, northern China, northern Russia, and also north in Canada. And eventually, that cold air will push through the jet stream and give us a colder than normal winter. As far as uh, South America, again, southern Brazil, northeast Argentina uh, is dry. U.S. southern plains are dry. And our weather guy believes that this dryness in the southern plains will build a ridge in the spring that could uh, amplify uh, to the east and south. There's also dryness in the southeast U.S., and those two ridges in the summer could come together for a drier than a normal U.S. summer, which I think would be bullish prices. Alan, seems like we're still seeing plenty of volatility in the financial markets. Let's start with this question. What are the implications of the flattening of the yield curve? Well, the yield curve actually was last week where we did see some moves higher in the short dated interest rates uh, or in the those instruments at the short end of the curve. But at the long end, the 30 year Treasury bond yields have actually declined and there were some breakouts in the futures to the upside uh, in, the, in the March bond future. So so that's an indication that the yield curve is flattening. That in itself suggests that there may be a slowing coming in the uh, global economy, not just the U.S. economy, but uh, potentially globally. So uh, I think some of the optimism that we are seeing in the uh, economic recovery may be waning to some degree, and that is being reflected in the yield curve adjustments. Let's talk fundamentals. What are the key fundamentals driving stock index futures? Well, of course, in the uh, short term, we have the variant news that uh, – Seems to be a negative, and then sometimes we're hearing some other things not, not quite so negative. But longer term, it still is the interest rate influence that is dominating. Uh, in fact, we are seeing some central banks becoming less aggressive in removing accommodation. In fact, even some central banks adding some accommodation, and that would be today. Uh, we had the People's Bank of China announcing that they are cutting their reserve requirement ratio so that was uh, somewhat of a surprise as far as the timing, maybe not the actual event. Also, we had the Bank of England that was supposedly last month at their meeting going to hike rates. 
That did not happen as a, a surprise. Uh, now there's some question about whether they can raise rates at the December meeting or even push a rate increase out into next year. And even the Bank of Japan still very reluctant to remove accommodation. So we still have very low interest rates globally. And I think that will be the long-term fundamental that continues to uh, support the indices from a longer-term point of view. And with seasonality, here we are nearing the end of 2021. What is the seasonal tendency for the S&P 500 futures for the month of December? Okay, in the last 20 years, the S&P in December, in, in the final month of the year, has advanced 75% of the time. And I would not be surprised to see that continuing again this year. So uh, with that optimistic seasonal, I would expect uh, that to be just another reason that we are likely to see additional gains in the longer term uh, in stock index futures, of course, in the month of December, and then possibly then uh, following into next year with the interest rate influence still very much a dominant fundamental. Thank you both very much. Remember, the views and opinions expressed today on this video are solely those of our guests and should not be construed as the views or opinions of ADM Investor Services or ADM. If you'd like more information about our brokerage services, would like to speak to one of our experts about managing your risks, or would like to open a trading account, please visit www.admis.com.